Well, let's start off with the results from the Carabao Cup matches played last night. Fulham defeated Sheffield Wednesday by two goals to nil, while Millwall were two nil win losers against Burnley and Preston North End that lost to Brighton and Hove Albion by two goals to nil, and Stoke City defeated Gillingham by one nil, and Chelsea, yes, Kai Havertz scoring a hat-trick in that one. Chelsea defeated Barnsley by six goals to nil, and Fleetwood Town lost to Everton by five goals to two, and some errors from the goalkeeper there, talking about a Pickford and Leicester City versus Arsenal, which was more like the key game of the night. Uh, Arsenal ran away winners in that one, 2-0 uh, with an own goal. And of course, and Katie are scoring the last goal on the last minute of the encounter. And Morecambe lost to Newcastle United, seven goals to nil. Well, I've got Jide Ladipo on standby to talk about the results and of course, our selected games. Good to have you, Jide. And uh, what do you make of the results from last night? Um, I wasn't really surprised with the results. Mm -hmm. um, Chelsea was going to come out all guns blazing, mm -hmm. especially with the fact that they lost against Liverpool at home um, over the weekend. Arsenal has been proven under Mikel Arteta, so that's to be expected. I watched the game yesterday with so much passion. I can see what Mikel Arteta is doing at the club. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Arsenal is just getting better by the minute. And, you know, it seems to have a really good bunch of players, the players that can come up from the bench. I mean, Inkete did the same again yesterday, you mm. know, and, and scored. So I'm really, really, really happy with our, our Arsenal's playing. As an Arsenal fan, I'm, I'm quite ecstatic. Um, and, you know, Chelsea was all guns blazing. Mm -hmm. You know, Kai Havertz actually lived, lived up to, to, to his billing yesterday because he got played in a really good position yesterday. So, mm. yeah. True. You know, some, some fans are of the opinion that it was Barnsley. That's why they got that 6 0 win uh, over the team. And of course, uh, uh, quite an easy team. That was one of the reasons why Havertz was able to score a hat trick. Do you agree? Not necessarily. You know, the English football is really, really, really competitive and quite mm. hard. We've seen situations in the past where a League Two side has beat a Premiership side in the Carabao Cup or in the FA League, oh. uh, FA Cup League. Um, so it's not unusual that things like that will happen. Um, but again, I personally think that Frank Lampard got his tactical setup right yesterday. I've always said that Kai Havertz would thrive in a more central position. Uh, in the first game against Brighton, uh, away, he played Kai Havertz on the left against Chelsea. He played him up front as a striker uh, or as a forward um, player. But yesterday, he played him in a position where he really thrived. And he also helped, like, you know, some of the players like Rush Buckley and Ta Tammy Abraham. Wow. And even Olivier Gir uh, Giroud was, was on point yesterday. So he helps when, you know, everything is in sync. So whether it was Bansley or not, I don't actually think, you know, um, the scoreline should be seen in a way that they were playing a, a much, much, you know, a, a team that is not, you know, up to premature standard. I just thought they played well yesterday and they deserved, you know, um, the win. All right, still talking about um, Chelsea, uh, some fans think Frank Lampard, yes, uh, that he might be having difficulty with selection uh, of the players in the team, knowing uh, where to place the likes of Kai Havertz, Timo Werner, Tammy Abraham and, and co. But yesterday we saw a more balanced Chelsea and of course the gameplay from the wing was almost to perfection. Yeah, I mean, look, yesterday we saw what happens when you play football players in mm. their position. Mm -hmm. I actually think the issue that he's having is where he's going to play Jorginho and Kai Havertz. You know, there's a lot of good football players and you know in, in Chelsea, and that's the situation you find yourself as a coach when you go out and buy a bunch of players and you're almost having like two or three first teams and those players are equally as good as each other. The issue becomes whether you play certain players in certain positions. But what tends to happen over a while is when you start to get to know those players and some players tend to play more consistently than others, then you're able to stick them in those positions and they, they hold down their first um, team shirts. So I think the problem that he's having will be solved over the course of the season. Some of those players might get injured as well. I mean, usually you don't wish that something like that will happen, but it's mm. just part of the game. Some players get injured and then, you know, some players stay fit um, throughout the season and you're able to use them and consistently and they're able to show what they can do.
Mm, true. Now let's go over to the one between Arsenal and Leicester City. Uh, well, before the start of that game, I was afraid for Arsenal because we know Leicester City to be a, a side that likes to fight from start to the end of the game. But yeah, Arsenal gave a decent performance. Once again, brilliant performance from um, Bukayo Saka and the new signing, Willian. Yes. Um, <laughs> a lot of people still don't understand what Mikel Arteta is up to at Arsenal. I've been saying it since the beginning of the season. Mm. I'm not saying that they're going to win the Premiership this season, yeah. but I think that they have the right to contest for top four based on how they played yesterday. And mm. to think like that wasn't the first team of Arsenal as a complete 11, that wasn't the first team. Um, mm. They have really improved under Mikel Arteta. Their decision-making in the final torch has been very good. They're also very quick on the ball. Yeah. And Leicester City just couldn't cope with them yesterday. You know, they were all, uh, you know, all out of sorts. Um, their key players in the team didn't really live up to expectations. Mm. Um, and, you know, the subs that came in, Andy Gray, yeah. uh, Andre Gray and Kelechi and Acho, they were just nowhere to be found. Mm. Um, Kelechi was absolutely dreadful yesterday. It's unfortunate that we're saying that, uh, perhaps because he hasn't had much game time. But Arsenal were right on point yesterday. I really love their passing. They're not becoming consistent with playing from the back. And no matter how much you pressure them, even if you're playing a high line against um, Arsenal, you know, you're not going to pressure them to give up the ball easily. They will make sure that they pass the ball from the back. Hmm. They will stick to the principles and stick to their guns. So I wasn't surprised that it would be Leicester yesterday at home. Yeah, great. And another uh, great performance from Edin Ketty as well. You remember he scored the winning goal against West Ham. And once again, he scored something that looked like a controversial goal yesterday against Leicester City. I don't think it was controversial. I just mm. think it was body-to-body -body strength. The mm. football player was going... The player who was alleged to have been fouled was going down anyway. You know, he was actually on the floor. And <laughs> what was he going to do? Mm. He just had to kind of jump over him and it looked like it pushed him, but he didn't. Uh, Edin Ketia is, you know, just turning out to be a really, really good striker. Uh, somebody we can uh, bank on if, if Obama Young or Lacazette is not, not on the pitch. He scored the winning goal against West Ham and then he did this. He scored the last goal against Leicester City again yesterday. So um, I really think the future is bright for Arsenal. If they can keep him to be a really consistent goal scorer, somebody that can get like 10, 15 a season, then I think Obama and Lacazette have a young player that can deputise for them. Mm, good. And uh, Bukayo Saka emerged as a man of the match yesterday for Arsenal. Now, talking about Leicester City, Kelechi Hiana, sure to be precise, that's coming back to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Now, Gennard Raw, some years ago, said that he was going to feature players who play first-team football, who play regularly for their club sides. And he released a team list um, some days ago, talking about the friendly games that were going down for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And boom, we saw Kelechi Hanacho's name on that list. And we know that he's not been getting regular starting shirts for Leicester City. Do you agree with Kelechi Hanacho's selection for the national team? Strangely, I do. And one of the reasons why I do is it wasn't bad last season. I mean, I followed Leicester City a lot last season because of Kelechi and Acho. I have a um, special interest in Nigerian football players that play for top top um, top clubs in Europe. I check them out regularly. Yeah. Um, when you look at Kelechi and Acho, I feel personally like he's not been given the chance to actually prove himself consistently at Leicester, Leicester City. The reason why Brent, Brenda Rogers is doing that, I'm not sure. Um, I feel, you know, they have two strikers in there that can score consistently. Oh. Um, um, Jamie Vardy, Jamie Vardy. And Kelechi Yanacho. But even when he scores, I've watched matches last season when Kelechi scored and he was substituted. And, and I'm like, what exactly is he trying to do? So I think if you give him enough time, football is about confidence and there's a psychological aspect to the game as well. If a football player is not playing consistently, there's every tendency that they psychologically, they're going to feel down and that, that's going to affect them. Now, if we say he's not playing consistently, last season he scored, you know, on average, compared to other Nigerian football strikers, he scored more goals. Mm. Now, the season started, the reason why he has not played the first two, three matches, we're not sure, you know, and then you put him in in a game against Arsenal, a side that we know is on a resurgence path at the moment and yeah. you're expecting him to kind of be all guns blazing. Yesterday was terrible, but I don't think we should judge him on that. I think he should be given enough time. He's mm. a good striker, and we need 
good strikers in the Super Eagles as backup. And I think he's one of them. So I don't mm. think that, you know, we should judge him based on like the first two, three matches of the season. Mm. All right. And uh, you talk about um, performance and all that. Chelsea's goalkeeper, Keparita Balaga, is currently going through a hard time at the club. And some have said he needs a psychologist to bring him back to form because it looks like he has lost all manner of confidence. And uh, Lampard is as well looking for a new goalkeeper to replace um, Kepa uh, Arita Balaga. I mean, should he really be given a second chance or be taken off the goalpost? Well, you know, when you're playing for a top premiership side and yeah. you hold a very key position, which is a goalkeeping position, second chances are very, very rare. I feel Frank Lampard has given him enough chances and, you know, you can't keep committing those kind of errors and expect to win the league or even mm. contest for the top four. Yeah. Frank Lampard's integrity is at stake. Chelsea's integrity is at stake as well. And... They pass, personally, I think they need a second goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. And sure. it's not anything against Kappa. It's just, it's, it's becoming too much now. He needs mm -hmm. competition as well. So I, I, it's up to Frank Lampard whether he wants to give him the chance. But personally, if I was him, I would be making sure that he has a stiff competition. So maybe just kind of do a rotation, you know, not consistently give him the jersey. So he feels like he doesn't have to work hard for it. True. Uh, great performance once again from the lads yesterday. Chelsea, Arsenal, Newcastle United, Everton, uh, most of the teams from the English Premier League. Well, in the games today, still on the Carabao Cup, Bristol City will take on Aston Villa. Lincoln City will be up against Liverpool and Manchester City will be taking on Bournemouth. Now, focus is on Manchester City. They have a lot of injury problems. Do you think that they can survive the season and all the cup competitions? Oh, yes, they can. You know, you... Uh, Pep Guardiola is a master tactician and he's not been too bad in the transfer market as well. They have a couple of football players that they brought in. Let's also understand that players like Gabriel Jesus and Phil Foden are playing the games of their life, the game of their lives. Mm. They're becoming much better. Uh, Phil Foden, for example, is a player that I admire a lot. I feel over the last two seasons he's developed into his own and you know he's hitting a level that you know, premiership clubs will be looking out for him if he's on the starting um, lineup if, when he's playing against them. So they, they have a good bunch of players that can get things going. Kevin De Bruyne is, has been consistent since um, he came back from injury after the lockdown. And uh, Ryan Sterling has yeah. always been consistent as well. Gabriel Jesus, personally, I think, will score more goals this season. So I don't think they have anything to, to be fearful about. They're playing against Bournemouth today, a side that just got relegated from the mm. Premiership. And that would definitely be an easy win for them. Mm. So, yeah, there's nothing to worry about with Manchester City. I actually think they're one of the top contenders for the Premiership this season. All right. And uh, talking about the Premiership and, of course, Premier League clubs, they fear a PR backlash if they do not organize a speedy cash bailout for financially troubled EFL clubs. It is understood that they are, that they are opposing opinions among top flight teams on providing financial relief and talks are ongoing between the leagues. But the EFL ch chairman, um, Rick Parry, said he remained optimistic of finding a solution. While some clubs are skeptical about providing EFL clubs with a handout, others, primarily the smaller clubs, are far from from sympathetic. Uh, they are far more, far more sympathetic. Now, the extension of playing matches behind closed doors because of the increasing COVID-19 rate will also add to clubs' financial concerns. Remember, um, recently the Prime Minister said that um, they were going to have fans come back to the stadium on the f from the 1st of October, but now it's been postponed until uh, about six months' time, uh, March to be precise. And this would definitely affect the clubs from uh, ticket sales and merchandise and all that. But what do you make of this situation? It's a very funny situation. And it's a situation where most clubs have not found themselves in, in a generation. I can't remember the last time a football club played a match behind closed doors mm. um, before the pandemic. It was usually because maybe a team got banned or they were sanctioned for doing something yeah. that was out of order. Um, so I personally just think that at the moment, there's a lot of burden on the premiership clubs themselves. Mm. Uh, they themselves are you know, trying to make sure that they're, they're, you know, they're meeting their financial obligations. Now you're telling them to bail out you know, other football clubs you know, in a lower league. Mm. You know, it's... It's an increasingly difficult situation. What happens as well is a lot of those clubs in the lower leagues, 
because they're chasing the dream, they're spending too much money. And before, I mean, this was well before the lockdown. They were spending too much money to make sure that they, you know, they finished in positions where they were able to get money from the league. Because again, yeah. we need to understand that the money that has been play, paid by the league or the Premier League to the football clubs, some of this money is, is tied to the position that they finished on, mm. uh, on the table. So what that does is it puts a lot of pressure on football clubs to overspend. And that's why we have the financial fair play rules. But mm -hmm. still, some clubs have been able to get away with it. So, you know, rather than talking about bailing out the clubs, I also think we need to be talking about how those clubs can be fi more financially responsible. But it's really going to be hard. I mean, look at what Arsenal did recently. They have to cut some of their non-football football playing staff, you know, just to make sure that they, they balance the books. And now you're now telling them to <laughs> bail out other football clubs. Yeah. Um, you know, from lower leagues, it's it's an increasingly hard situation. Mm, true, true. And I hope that they can actually handle this situation in time because uh, it's really affecting all the smaller clubs who really don't have money to pursue the rest of the season. But before I let you go, what are your thoughts on Luis Suarez leaving Barcelona? Do you think Barcelona will be stronger uh, than they used to be or they will be depleted? That's hard to tell. Barcelona is a team that is always producing football stars. And what tends to happen is that once a player leaves, another player is able to, you know, come into their own. Um, they just put a 400 million euro clause on Ansu Fati yesterday. And, yeah, and that's telling you one thing. That's telling you that they believe in the future of the club. Mm. They believe that the football club can produce football players that, that is able to fill the shoes of the players that are leaving. So... I don't think Suarez leaving will affect the club. I think they have good strikers that can score as well. Um, Griezmann is one of them. Uh, if they can sort out, you know, the technicality in the team, if they can sort out getting a good, consistent result over time, um, I think they will do quite well. All right, thank you very much, GD, for your time. And it's always great to talk to you and talk about everything sports. It's a pleasure, Doctor. Continue to stay safe. All right, thank you very much and have a great day.